Well, I have a rather large box here and hopefully it doesn't contain a vacuum. So let's open it. Um, yeah, if I can around the camera. Huh. Oh, very well packed. It contains a cardboard. <laughs> Empty packaging for video cables. Oh, maybe I got fooled, huh? Come on. Oh, yeah. That's the first thing that feels heavy. Ah, look at that. That looks like a little machine wise. And yeah, if you know the color, that is from Proxon. Huh. Okay, uh, let's put that aside for the moment. And, uh, and finally, uh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I'll give you <laughs> a drill. Nice, huh? Let's, uh, we will have a look at that in a second. Um, let's put that away. Somewhere else, something else in here. <laughs> a screw. And A wooden board. Okay. Um, yeah, I clean up the mess and then we um, have a look at the whole thing. So we have a very old, or relatively old, little Proxon drill press. Yeah. And uh, also in the box, uh, that little machine wise. Uh, machine wise, uh, yeah, n n nothing too fancy, but uh, yeah, I guess it's okay. And uh, that ominous screw that's obviously um, was used to attach the base of the drill press to that wooden plate. So uh, next step, let, let me get rid of that wooden plate here. I really don't want to use it. The Proxon TBM 12 volt. TBM for German table bore machine or uh, yeah, table drill press. And yeah, 12 volts. As I mentioned, no longer manufactured, no longer sold. There's a successor model also called Proxon TBM 220 volts. So obviously directly for your mains AC. Um, yeah, together with that and that piece of wood, I paid $109.99. Um, yeah, um, I'm not really sad uh, <laughs> or angry, but um, I'm not, uh, yeah, it, it was not really a, a great buy. It, it was an okay buy, not a great buy, considering um, the successor model costs without the wise, uh, 150 bucks upwards. So, First things first, uh, let's find somewhere 12 volt. 
before that we should have a little peek inside because that doesn't look okay. So, oh, look at that. Oh, <laughs> that belt looks just awful. But there are two, uh, sorry, two spare belts, which are also look very, very sorry. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Um, I don't know how long they will survive. Uh, yeah, but other than that, everything looks okay here so yeah we, we will see how long that uh, <laughs> belt actually survives huh so yeah um of course i have three positions for the belt which should give you between uh yeah not between 2100 4200 and 6 thousand rpms and i specifically bought that so i have a drill stand up here not in the cellar that can give me slightly lower rpms than uh, the usual uh, proxon yeah electric motor uh, in the proxon drill stand which you all know uh card link um yeah Let's fire that thing up. Of course, I hadn't a power supply handy uh, for that thing. It needs 85 watts, about ish, or the new model has 85 watts. So, uh, yeah, it goes now oh, <laughs> backwards uh, to a beefy bridge rectifier, which should be good for 25 amps, and that is supplied by this transformer uh, you probably have seen it in this video card link yeah it's from scrap heap so i don't know if it's really working uh, 12 volt output 150 va and that buggers off to uh yeah the power strip which is currently off and i turn the power strip on Nothing happens, that's because there is a second switch on the back here and ah, it lives. And there's no <clears throat> voltage here, at least not voltage I can feel. So maybe it's time to put on, yeah. That ain't flying. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, as I said, these belts. Okay, that belt here. Uh, does it feel better? Uh, not really. Let's try it. Okay. But I guess you can adjust it because there are two screws here to hopefully shift the axle a little bit back. Otherwise, this test will be cut short. Yeah, let's try that. So open up the screws. Just a little, move it backwards, not too much, tighten the screws. Oh yeah, and the screws, they don't have a, a, a round head, they have a square head, so yeah. Try it again. 
Hey, it's working. So yeah, it's quite powerful. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so, uh, okay, it's working. Um, next step, well, I have it half disassembled, so uh, yeah, let's go ahead with uh, disassembly. So, to get the whole assembly off the pillar, there's here a screw and it's very nice to adjust. Uh, compared to the newer drill stand from Proxon, this goes very smoothly. So, uh, yeah, let's get this thing apart and, oh, I just see. <laughs> okay, that's not original Proxon. So, yeah. <clears throat> So, a little set screw is holding on the lever. Yep, yeah, there's a counter bar. Oh yeah, and it's, uh, yeah, faced. Uh, okay. So, a little flat piece and a little counter bar. Oh, anyway, let's put that aside. Um, can I get this bottom plate off? I wonder what's in there. I think it's snapped in. There's a bolt here and a nut and maybe, just maybe, this is holding the whole thing in. I mean it should pivot that way if the snaps, snap ends are out but uh, and I don't think this is supposed to be opened. But anyway, that's a secure nut, isn't it? And the bolt is out, sorry, out of focus. Okay. Focus is back, uh, bolt is out. And now I can pivot. Yeah, I, I'm not sure, but uh, only two snap ends here, two small snap ends. And I'm pretty sure you simply. Uh, Okay, that's the way. Ah, and inside we have, oh, that looks like a stupid DC motor. Hmm, nice. And how is that working here? Ah. See it with the lever. And it's all still very well lubricated, so I won't need to get any further. But uh, just for reference, look at the bearing. I think mean, this is 85 watts or something. Yeah, uh, motor from KSA. 
nothing else on here. J J Japan, Japan. So uh, yeah, and a uh, nice big bearing here. And I don't know if there's another bearing up here, but um, I think that's far enough. I mean, make a bigger hole here. You can feed in more cables uh, or even put electronic here in, uh, you know, for motor regulation. Uh, yeah. And that's, oh, sorry, <clears throat> that scale, that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, let's simply here press fit. Okay. What's also missing for me, um, wow. Okay, uh, for your aficionados. Yeah, it's upside down, but it's a row. The correct German pronunciation is Röhm. R-Ö-H-M. Röhm. Like motor head with an Ö. And this chuck has been made in West Germany. So, probably before the German reunification in 1990. That would make the whole thing at least, well, 28 years, 29 years old. So, yeah, 164th to 1 fourth. Germany, 3 eighth to 24? Okay, I put it the right way around. I'm sorry. Uh, so, Rome. Ah, 0 0.5 to 6.5 millimeters. Not 10 millimeters, though. Mm. Uh, 3 8 to 24. Yeah, you, you will know what that means, your uh, Imperial guys, as one made in West Germany. Nice. Yeah, um, you definitely won't find that kind of chuck <laughs> on newer Proxon machines somehow. I doubt it very much. So, yeah. Um, let's put that to back together again. Uh, yeah, need the bolt for that. And this is, uh, yeah, with a hex molded here into, and this is aluminium, the whole case, seems to me. So you only have to secure that from one side. Uh, turn it from one side. You don't have to counter it. That's very nice. I'm, I, I mean, uh, compared to the newer uh, Proxon products, uh, this is insane. <laughs> I mean, a bolt and a nut just to keep this plastic housing here or this plastic cover. Um, yeah, uh, Rome, Chuck, so this is uh, already too tight, and then you should simply snap that back in or not. I'm not quite sure what they thought about 
this part of the disassembly assembly okay maybe just maybe I'll try it the other way around so uh, how I <clears throat> disassembled it obviously there are no user solvable parts inside or maybe there's a trick to uh, getting that in and out uh, forgot the washer and now the whole thing can go up or can go back on the pillar which should be too hard at all yeah that's really smooth and yeah there is Yeah, even with this very short lever you have here, you can fix that without a problem. Um, yeah, I will have to replace this. Uh, this this is uh, an atrocity, and yeah, it's also not tightened to the full extent. And I need another hex key. So here we go. Okay. So let's put on one of the belts. I mean, I have three of them, uh, so I can... There, there seem to be some kind of, I don't know, leather? How old is that thing? And that belt actually, uh, yeah, okay, doesn't look too good but uh, also not too bad and the whole thing is secured here with that little snap very positive very easy to take off and on yeah um differences uh, to the new machine. The new machine has a, a screw up here, which is a pain in the ass, I guess. And uh, there is some plastic stuff here, which is probably containing the electronic uh, to get the 220 vol uh, volts down mains AC to the 12 volt the motor needs inside. Um, let's get that thing on again, all the way around, and that's another hex key. I'm a little bit, ah, okay, now it goes on all the way. Yeah, I'm a little bit, um, I don't know what this scale is supposed to do. Uh, obviously it's no longer really working. Maybe it needs some oil on the back. Uh, yeah, because it's only press fit here, but uh, yeah, it has an uh, indicator here, but if you uh, slip it, let's say, to zero, and then you press the lever, then it counts 11, 10, 9, and so on. So you would set that to the depth you want to drill, let's say 20 millimeters, and then you yeah if it would still hold on to the axis and then you would go down to zero that's uh, a very odd system very odd um let's compare that 
thing. Oh yeah, and uh, <laughs> the parallel. Yeah, massive aluminum, aluminum with a little set screw with a knob and you put that on and you fasten the knob. And it absolutely doesn't move. Uh, let's check if that is actually 90 degrees. Well, it isn't, not by default. Uh, so you, if you really need that at 90 degrees as a parallel, you have to align it and then fasten the set screw. But then it really, that doesn't move. That's not too bad. Uh, yeah, what I wanted to do is compare this uh, yeah, historic Proxon product to my new Proxon drill stand. Let's start with the base. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the machining, I mean, you hear it, <laughs> the machine marks. This seems to be, even if it looks rougher, it seems to be a little bit smoother, even if it's not shiny. Uh, the scale is part of the molding and here the scale is just, uh, you know, uh, some plastic uh, foil glued in, um, yeah. And then that's a sorry excuse for a parallel comes with it. And yeah, even if you really tight that down, yeah, it, it still moves. And this one here, yeah, I can't move that. So uh, yeah, it doesn't slide parallel by itself. You have to adjust it. Uh, yeah, get it into a right angle, but uh, this thing here, uh, yeah, <clears throat> sorry, excuse. Um, yeah, moving upwards, uh, the Lever here is obviously a wee bit smaller, and, uh, but uh, yeah, you don't expect to exert that much forces on this uh, yeah, drill stand here. The action, oh, this is so, this is so smooth. And yeah, this is also smooth now after <laughs> I reworked it all, yeah, cart and repaired it. Link, so double cart, double link. Um, yeah, height adjustment. Uh, you see, that thing is really small here, but I have absolutely no problems, yeah, opening that up and sliding this up and down. keeping the drill centered and then fixing it again. And it doesn't take much force. And the reason being, yeah, this is a lot of material here. Yeah, sliding, yeah, here, uh, this is a good half an inch also, uh, top and bottom. Yeah, this gives you a nice feel. Whereas the newer model, I mean, you have a bigger lever 
and you need it, you you can hear it. It doesn't slide nicely. It's uh, yeah, this is hollow. Let's get it off. This is really <laughs> uh, not two defined surfaces, but just a hole. Yeah, and then slot it. And while it looks messy, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, it's also functional, but uh, this feels so much nicer, so much nicer. So, uh, yeah. There you have it, and uh, no, it's not the end, not quite, um, application. So obviously you are using this setup for, yeah, high RPMs, 5000 RPMs minimum, and then upwards to 22,000 RPMs, uh, which is nice uh, to drill, for example, PCBs. Uh, printed circuit boards. Uh, that thing goes from 2100 RPM to 6000 RPMs and also uh, yeah diameter up to six millimeters. This goes up to uh, don't let me lie uh, three four millimeters uh, I mean four millimeters uh, even at uh, 5,000 RPM and any material is <laughs> uh, pushing it. Um, yeah, that's the reason I was searching for something like that. And uh, yeah, I had a good experience with my old um, mini saw. I bought old Proxon mini saw I bought, uh, used, cart link and I thought um, I have luck with that and uh, I mean I like it I like it don't get me wrong uh, but I was a little bit surprised that it's 12 volt maybe I didn't read the description correct uh, on eBay uh, maybe it was not mentioned um, I won't put on the eBay listing because uh, yeah this was used single item um, and I mentioned the price, $109.99 plus eight bucks shipping. And considering there was this little machine wise thrown in, uh, I guess 110 bucks, 120 bucks uh, is not that bad, especially when you get that kind of quality here. So uh, yeah, uh, a room. I still cannot uh, really believe it, but uh, obviously, um, yeah, the key is obviously was missing for that. So I need a key for a small room. Uh, okay. Yeah, and I should, uh, even if I have two spares, I should get a new, um, new belts for that thing. That uh, shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, that's it for today. Bye.